Are you still listening to them? So I keep going on YouTube and looking up different art advice, how to improve your art. That sounds like an easy thing. I keep hearing the same advice. It's like someone makes a video and then the next person makes a video and it's they want to make the same video because that video was popular. How to improve your art. That's a popular subject. They want to make the same kind of video so they can get the views. So they just copy whatever that person said, change the words a little bit, and they make their own video. And then the next person does it, and the next person does it. So I keep seeing the same terrible, horrible advice by many different artists. Many of them are wonderful artists, and I don't know why they're not listening to themselves and figuring out that they're passing on bad advice. I'm gonna do a drawing this time so you can listen and watch at the same time. It's not as boring as just looking at my face. All right, let's get into it. Okay, this first one may get some feedback. Down below, someone's gonna go in the comments section and tell me how wrong I am, but just listen to what I say, the whole thing, before you get all angry. The first piece of advice I always hear is, in order to get better with your art, you need to draw from life, not photos. Now, I want to say a couple of things before anybody gets angry. Photos are life, first of all. I know it's from, it's not real life. I get what you're saying. I understand that. But it's still life. It still shows the shape and the texture and the shadows and all of those things that you see every day. Now, if you do look outside of a photo and you look at real life and you try and draw something, that doesn't necessarily improve your art. It may change your perspective of how you're drawing something, but a circle is a circle, whether it's in real life or if it's on a photo. I know the three dimension thing may throw some people off and they find it harder. I'm not saying you can't improve your skill level with drawing. I'm just saying your art necessarily isn't the best. It doesn't get better necessarily. It could, it could. I'm not saying it can't, but any kind of practice you do is going to improve your art. So to measure that, I don't understand that. I keep hearing that statement. And I, I keep thinking to myself, I know artists who have never drawn from life that are amazing. They don't draw from life ever. Mostly because what they're drawing isn't in real life. Most of the stuff that I draw is the reference. I have a reference photo, but it's abstract. I'm not drawing it from life. I can, but would it make me better? Probably not. And I have done it before. I don't think it came out any better or worse depending on whether I was drawing from the photo or whether I was drawing from life. So if you want to draw from life, draw from life. I have no problem with that. You may see things differently and realize shapes are a little different or something like that. I get that. That's all wonderful. Do that. I encourage you to do it if that's what you want to do. It was one of the first things that I tried that was different and then I realized I hated it and I stopped doing it. Okay, let's move on. So this, the second one, okay, this one has actually gotten me some hate comments in the past when I've done this on other videos and I've talked about this, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna talk about it anyway, but listen to the context that I put it in before you freak out, okay? So I hear people say automatic drawing will increase your creativity. And immediately while they're saying that, they start doing an abstract drawing, like a doodle, not an automatic drawing. That's not what that is. They keep saying that, but that's not what it is. An automatic drawing is an actual thing that has, it has rules to it, and people don't think it does, but it does. Automatic drawings have rules. Doodles do not. Automatic drawing, you basically have to stop thinking about what you're doing, not consciously develop something. You can start with an automatic or an automatic drawing and then go into a doodle, which I've done many times. You just start with a couple lines and then you start developing those lines. And so you start an automatic drawing, then you go into a doodle. I get it. There's nothing wrong with that. And that does help creativity. But I, in my opinion, in my experience, Automatic drawing does not increase anything. And I know people get upset when you say that. I mean, I've had some straight up hate comments on this one. So you don't know what you're talking about. You're a moron. I get it. But automatic drawing is just drawing lines 
and not thinking about it. And then if you start to concentrate on something, you have to immediately stop and go somewhere else and then start drawing other lines somewhere else because you're not supposed to be thinking. And it looks like a scribble. That's what it looks like. It doesn't look like shapes with texture and form. That's a doodle. And I've had people argue with me, telling me, oh, you have no idea what you're doing. You're doing it wrong or you're, you're not doing it. I know what it is. I've seen it a hundred times. You can actually look up what it is. It tells you what it is. It's not like free drawing or something like that. That's a doodle. It's completely different. I have multiple videos on this and people argue with me every time I say it. So I'm expecting the same thing here. I'm sure someone will argue with me and say, no, automatic drawing is this person just said, matter of fact, here's what I get on one of them that I did my first one which was like that when I first started the channel and one of the things I get is uh, no I just saw a video that was just before this and they were saying of course they're a more known artist than I am so their opinion is more important but they were saying that automatic drawing was the doodle that they were doing and because they're a famous artist they must know I don't think so I think I still disagree with them I don't think that is an automatic drawing, it's a doodle. So if you want to increase your creativity, doodle. Just do something abstract that may spark an idea for you. But the automatic drawing thing, just drawing mindlessly without thinking about anything and scribbling on a page until it's filled up is useless to me. Now I want to temper that response by saying this. If for some reason you have you get something out of the scribbling, then by all means do it. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm not saying that it's not a practice that people do. I'm just saying I don't think it, cre it, it sparks any kind of creativity. It definitely doesn't in me. And I just, I've done it for, last year I did it all the time. I wanted to make sure that I was giving it a fair shake. And every once in a while I would just do it. For a while there, every day I had done it for like a month. But then I would just, every once in a while, I would just do it and make sure that I'm still, okay, I still agree with this point of view. And there you go. That's just what happened. Here's how I liken it. I liken it to creating an actual piece of art is kind of like going for a drive in your car where you have an agenda. You know exactly where you're going. You go there on purpose. You know all the turns you got to make and where you got to go. And that's what you do. A doodle is kind of like just going for a drive out in the country. You just want to get away, clear your head. You just go for a drive and wherever the road takes you, that's where you go. An automatic drawing is like getting behind the wheel of a car and just flipping the steering wheel in every which direction and stepping on the brake and gas intermittently and not knowing what you're doing. And then when you end up in a ditch, you say, oh yeah, that was very relaxing. I really got something out of that. That was very creative of me. But that's just my opinion. You do what you want. Okay, this one I've heard for years. I think ever since I ever got into watercolor, I've heard this. There are some, there are some paint snobs out there who always say the same thing. They say, what you really need to do is find, now this is mostly for watercolor, but it does work for other paints as well. Just hear me out. So they say, what you really want are single pigment paints. That's what you want to paint with, the single pigment. That way you know it's a predictable result. But the thing is, if you use multi-pigment paint and you use it enough, you already know what the result is. If you spend the time to mix that with the rest of your palette, you know what other colors you're going to get. And those people, immediately after saying that, tell you that you should also only have three colors on your palette because you can mix all the colors that you need. That automatically makes them not a single pigment. Now I know someone's gonna say, yeah, the reason why you want a single pigment is so that you can mix the other pigments, mix them with the other paints and not get mud because you know what kind of a predictable thing that is. There are plenty of single pigment paints that create mud when you mix them with the wrong colors. You have to understand what you're doing and understand a little bit of color theory, or at least if you don't understand the color theory, 
just practice with your palette. Make sure that you know what your palette's going to do when you mix those colors together. It takes a couple of minutes, not a very long time. Just mix a couple of colors together and just keep that as a swatch to the side and say, oh, okay, I know that if I mix this color and this color, it's going to get a little bit muddy and I shouldn't do that. So I'm not going to do that. It's very simple. You don't have to, it's not like this huge secret of art where you have to, oh, you just use single pigment paints. No, use whatever, however many pigments are in your paint that you're going to use, as long as you have the color that you want. And that's what I'm sticking to. I have to be a little careful. I got a little lightheaded on that last rant, but uh, it's just because I'm forgetting to breathe because I'm just yelling too much. And I have to calm down a little bit and get into this next one. Okay, so this one goes along with the people I was just talking about where they tell you you only need a few colors on your palette. You can mix all your own colors. You only need three primaries and that you mix all your secondaries and you can just, you'll learn the colors that way better. I'm not saying you won't, but here's what else, what else I'm saying. Maybe you don't have time to sit there mixing colors all day because you mix a color, you go to paint a spot, you got to make sure you mix the right amount of color. And if you don't, then you got to remix it and you're never going to get it the exact shade. And if you do, you're going to put a little of this one, little of that one, little of this one, just keep going back and forth. You're going to have a huge puddle of paint that you're now going to waste because you're never going to use that again once you finish that little spot. So here's what I'm saying. Whatever colors you use the most, get those as secondary colors. You can mix some colors, there's nothing wrong with that. I like to use the full strength color and get some secondaries that I really like that particular shade of. And then if I want to tune it one way or the other, I can do that. It's very easy to do. You just put a little bit of paint from there, the other side, and just tune it a little bit. But basically I have a base to work from and that's what I like to do. I think it takes way too much time to mix all your colors unless you really are that like stuck that you drilling this into your head that you absolutely have to do this then just take your time and go ahead and get the secondary color it's not a big deal so I apologize you may hear some rain behind me it is pouring outside and I'm kind of next to the window so you may hear some of that I apologize if you do but let's get into this next one you may have heard me talk about it before so I, I when people say oh you should never sharpen your pencil with a sharpener, you should use a razor blade and have like a three inch uh, piece of graphite sticking out of the end of there so you can shade on the side and all that other garbage. Listen, I use the Derwent Super Point. It puts out a long tip, pencil tip. is no problem. I never have trouble and say, oh, I wish I had a longer side of the pencil to draw with. If you want to do that, they make graphite sticks you can draw with if that's what you really want to do. It's way too messy for me. And I don't like the idea of using a razor blade that close to my fingertips because the pencil is very small to begin with. Even if you hold it at the end, you're going to put too much pressure on the tip and snap it. So you got to hold it closer to the end when you do it. And you're going to cut yourself. I know it's going to happen. So don't do that. If you really are that concerned, get one of those two millimeter pencil lead holders and then you can extend the lead out as far as you want. You don't have to sit there with the razor blade and slice off the end of your fingertips. You need your fingerprints and you don't want to accidentally do something. Then someone goes to fingerprint you. They can't get a good fingerprint. Then it looks like you're trying to hide something. You don't want to do that. You want to go through all that stuff. So just go ahead and get the lead holder and go and no, it's not a lead. It's called a lead holder though, but don't worry about that. Just go get one of those two millimeter lead or just use a mechanical pencil if that's what you really want to use. Get a mechanical pencil and just pop that tip out as much as you want and use it for as long as you want. And when it runs low, you just pull some more out. It's very easy. Okay, now I don't exactly have a problem with this advice except for what they try and make it sound like it actually is. So I don't usually do any kind of pencil sketching. I usually draw with ink directly on the page and that's what you'll hear people tell you. Don't do any pencil sketch, just draw with the ink directly on the page. That way you commit to it and you, ha you have to live with every decision you make and it they go on and on. Here's the thing, I hate when people make rules about art like that. What if you're one of those nervous people where you won't even get started now? 
because you know that you you usually use a pencil sketch under and now you're going to go with ink and now you can't even get started because you're so afraid of making a mistake because it has to be perfect. You usually like to do the pencil and then if a line goes in the wrong spot, you erase it and put in a new line and make sure it's right and take your time with it. And if that's what you like to do, don't listen to those morons. You do it the way you want to do it. I go directly with ink because I'm doing something abstract and I enjoy doing making something and if a line gets out of place you have no idea because it's an abstract piece so I just make do with that line and then I fix it and make something out of it. I look at it as like a challenge to do something different than what I plan to do. But it doesn't matter. It's not like it's a bird where the, the feet are bigger than the head. It's not like that. But if you're drawing something more realistic and you need that pencil sketch behind it, by all means, use the pencil first. Go behind it. Take some extra time. It's not a big deal. It's better than having anxiety about when you're going to put the pen on the page and mess it up and now you got to start over. And just do the pencil thing first if you have to. You have to understand that artists are very dramatic. We have our emotions right at the surface. Everything is like this giant big deal. It's everything we do is an epiphany. It's like, oh, I know, I, I didn't believe it at first, but I took a wedge of lemon and stuck it on my desk when I went to draw, and the scent just increased my cognitive function so that I could draw so much better. I just, I just encourage everybody, it changed my life, just for everybody to use a wedge of lemon, stick it on the edge of your desk when you draw, and you'll draw so much better. That's how artists are. They think everything they do is just, that was the life-changing moment for them. Just look, I understand some people get something out of just going in for ink for a little while and just trying to make that work and not do the pencil and it challenges them and they enjoy that. But if you're someone who you don't enjoy that, don't do that to yourself. It's stressful sometimes and it's not worth it. Okay, these next two run into themselves a little bit. We're just going to talk about it. So I always hear the whole thing, and I've mentioned this before, and I've demonstrated this before, the whole draw with your whole arm. That Listen, not everybody is using huge pieces of canvas to draw on or huge pads to draw with. So I use like 5x8 drawings or 8x10 drawings. It's probably one of the biggest that I've ever done. And maybe a 9 by 12 is the biggest, but usually 8 by 10, that's as usually as big as I go. And many times I'm doing very fine details, so I don't, I can't draw with my whole arm. I'll cover the whole page. I can't draw like a half a, a quarter of an inch line that's very, very fine with my whole arm. It doesn't work that way. And that runs right into the second one. People say, oh, you should draw bigger, at least a 16 by 20. That's equivalent to drawing about nine five by eights for me. That's about one and a half to two months of work for me. And my schedule does not allow for that. So I draw things that are smaller so that I can complete them. And I'm a little quirky, so, you know, I like completion. I enjoy completion. I don't like things sitting for a month Un, like not done it's incomplete matter of fact I'm working on another video right now where I'm going to go back to something that I found that I didn't finish and it drove me absolutely nuts so I have to go finish it now so that's just me I need to finish everything so especially I don't understand people that do colored pencil pieces large colored pencil pieces it's going to take them months to get piece done they might do a couple of pieces a year that's, that would drive me absolutely insane. I applaud them for their skill and for their attention to detail and for their persistence. But that, that's not me. I couldn't do that. I need to do something small so it feels like I accomplished something. And then I, I inspired to go do something else. So that's just me. But not everybody has to do that. So don't always draw with your arm. You look like you're a flapping chicken all the time. And also, if you want to draw smaller, draw smaller, because that may actually encourage you. You may get better because you're going to do multiple pieces and many, many more pieces if you do them smaller than if you did them bigger. So you'll have many times to practice that technique over a number of different pieces and you feel accomplished. I would say if you want to feel more accomplished, if you want to get better at art, 
go smaller and it's okay to draw with your wrist. Don't worry about that. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about this drawing a little bit because I haven't done that this whole video. Basically, what I set out to do with this one was I wanted to combine these two different styles that I was doing and just see if I can put them together into one. So one of the styles is where I draw a lot of the dark spots around and then I put white on top, like white highlights on top. This one I did with a paint pen, but sometimes I just use gouache and I make different patterns and things like that. And then I also wanted to do that fibrous thing. And I, I missed, this was a missed opportunity. What I should have done I, with this whole piece, I should have said, oh, this is really a symbolic thing where, you know, where, where the piece is on the inside and we're all different shapes and sizes and colors and things and we need to stick together because society's trying to pull us apart and we need to cling together to remain strong and hold on to each other but that's not what it is because really my art doesn't mean a damn thing and what this is actually is just me trying to draw these little fiber things and putting it together with that dark thing with the highlights it doesn't mean anything it's just absolutely nothing i just thought it was interesting to look at and that's why it's here. So it's a missed opportunity on my part. It's all my fault. That's on me. So thumbs up the video. If you don't care about any of these people's advice or you just don't care about my advice and you're going to listen to all these people in spite of everything I've said because they are better artists than me and they may know a little bit more than me and I could just be just flapping my gums just to flap my gums. So... That's about it for me. I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.